Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, Ryan here once again. Uh, so today uh, we're, we're, we talked about about one box issues uh, on your Detroit's uh, Freightliners. Uh, and then we talked more about the one box in general, um, the insides of it, the guts of it, DPS, uh, canisters, SCR, and all that stuff. We've, we've been into that before. Um, but today I actually uh, have a carcass of what's left of a wiring harness on here from a customer's truck. and. Uh, I was, I'm going to talk a little bit about what went wrong here and things to look at. And this was actually a relatively easy fix and um, pretty cheap as well. Um, kind of surprising at the cost of these harnesses compared to some other makes out there. Um, but uh, that's what we're going to talk about today and uh, show you a couple things and um, go from there. Okay, guys. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, um, please subscribe. You know, we're always doing uh, maintenance videos, trucking videos. I was an owner operator for a long time and a mechanic. Before I was an owner operator, owner operator, then mechanic again, um, and out on my own as far as mechanic and now. Um, so we're always putting out new uh, maintenance videos, and we talk about the trucking business and, and stuff like that as well. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're going to get started here. So like I was saying in the beginning, this is a harness off of a, I believe it was a 2015 or 2016 Cascadia DD15 uh, one box system emissions. Uh, so the customer had um, originally had a couple faults for uh, uh, SCR conversion efficiency that was low um, and a couple other codes. I can't remember, can't remember the FMIs and all that was on it because I deleted everything. I uh, should have saved it, but I didn't. Um, so I hooked my computer up to it and originally found there was an open uh, going to the uh, DEF doser module or the DEF injector, which uh, this lead here is what actually goes to your doser module. So this is a real easy, quick diagnosis. I got out of the, I was like 30 seconds underneath the truck. Um, and noticed we had some uh, broken insulation here. And then we'll try to zoom in here a little bit on that. But as you can see, these wires, something they, I don't know what they rubbed against because I didn't see anything they had rubbed against. But what happens, it, it this copper wire in here, once it mixes with salt and uh, you know, this corrosive additives and stuff they put on the highways up here in, in Ohio and everywhere else, um, it actually ate through the wires. So there, there's two wires there that are completely disconnected in there, um, So which was causing um, <clears throat> a fault because obviously your, your doser module or de def injector isn't going to work because it's you got two, two or three wires there that are completely disconnected. And so it's someone to throw a fault for an open. So immediately it said it went straight to wiring. It was either something in the wiring or the doser module itself. Um, so believe it or not, um, I, got a, I got an account through uh, Acre, Akron Valley Freightliner down here, the new one. Uh, and I get pretty good pricing, but this, this whole harness here was only like 130 something, like $137 or something. And they actually had it on the shelf, which was even more surprising down there. Uh, so it's relatively cheap, and on the Cummins, I've replaced them on the Cummins' uh, DPF uh, SCR system harness before, and they're closer to like 800 or 1,000, I believe, the last one uh, put on. Um, so they're a lot more pricier, and I think they were actually simpler, a simpler harness than this. Um, so if you're getting any, first thing, if you're getting any one box, if you're getting any codes and stuff like that, the first thing, the simplest thing I would check if you're going to be troubleshooting this yourself, is get underneath there and look at the harness, because like I said, you could get, uh, like I said, this is for the doser module here. These two are for your NOx sensors, uh, inlet and outlet NOx sensor. Then uh, these two with the little big rubber boots over them are for your uh, pressure sensors, inlet and outlet pressure sensor. Um, and the rest of these, the other five plugs here, are all for temperature sensors. And then this is your main plug where it connects into the, the truck harness, chassis harness or the other going over to the ACM. Uh, so relatively, I mean, you got one, eight, three, eight, ten. You have like ten plugs here. Then and, and these things come. They got little clips and everything. Uh, so it was relatively. The truck that I was working on, it was kind of hard to get to the one box because everything was kind of shoved forward from where they normally are. So I couldn't slither up between the drive shaft and all that and get in there. So it was a little challenging. Not to mention it was like 15 degrees outside. So when you're trying to work without gloves on and find stuff like this, it'd be a little challenging when it's that cold. Uh, but anyways, like I said, this is a cheap fix, guys. Uh, if you can do it, you I mean, pretty much if... I'll show you guys on these plugs real quick. So these type, the, the plug for your uh, doser module and for your NOx sensors, they have this little pullout. And a lot of times, you got to be careful, but you can... A lot of times you can get a screwdriver, a little screwdriver up in there and you'll kind of work it out. 
but you pull it down at the same time. See, it has like that little slope there. So that you have to kind of pull it out, wiggle it out, and this will pull out at the same time to get that disconnected. Now, the rest of these plugs are these ones with these little locks on them. And if you don't know how to work these locks, right now they're all unlocked. So I'll push that. It probably won't let me lock it since this thing's. Yeah, it's not going to let me. Since it's not plugged in, it won't let me lock it. <laughs> okay, there's one. So right now this plug is in the locked position, so it's all the way forward, so you have that little tick there kind of sticking out. Uh, they, they actually make uh, a little tool for it. I have one floating around here somewhere. Uh, but my, I broke my pocket knife, and it actually made a perfect tool for actually opening these up. So the best way to, do, to open these up, you'll see there's kind of like a little angle right there. So you can get in here, and you push it towards that end of the plug. And then you have to push it down at the same time. should be all the way open. So once that's all the way over, then you'll push this down and you'll hear it click when it unlocks. It'll make a clicking noise and you click it, then you can pull it out. So that's how you work those. And when you reconnect it, you push it in and then lock it in. That's it. So pretty, pretty simple. Um, they can be dependent on how they're positioned on a sensor or something. Sometimes they can be like, you can't hardly get to them. So they can sometimes be a little bit challenging. But uh, the main thing is, guys, if you're getting those codes and stuff like that on these one boxes, the first thing I would, this is your cheapest fix. So I would uh, go through and, and check all your wiring and connections. And if you've got a place, like I said, that's worn like that, um, if it's been chafing, most likely you're going to have, like I said, especially up here, we use salt and brine water and all that stuff. It's, it doesn't mix with uh, bare wiring. So, But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I just thought I'd share this with you while I had it here. And... Um, you know, just, just some things to look out for. So if you guys, we got some other uh, one box videos and stuff out there. If you're interested in, what, in the inside of them and all that type of stuff, uh, check those videos out as well. Okay guys, so this was just a, a kind of a quick once over on, uh, on a one box harness here. So like I said, like I said a minute ago, if you're uh, interested in learning more about the one boxes and stuff like that, we uh, have other videos. So check those, check those out as well. And um, again, um, if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, uh, hit the bell for your updates, and as always, uh, thumbs up if you like the video, and uh, we'll, we'll keep doing uh, what we do here and making more for you. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all the support. We'll see you next time.